Good morning. Hello, we are going to get started. Hopefully everyone can hear me. If not, please use the chat box and let me know. You can speak louder, softer. Um, just speak up, let me know. But thank you guys for joining me today. We're here to... Okay, perfect. Thanks, Corey. Um, we're here to talk about marijuana in our youth today. We're going to go over a few different types of strands, really talk about the health effects on the brain, um, and add in a little prevention at the end. Um, a little housekeeping stuff before we get started. Of course, any questions, use the chat box. Um, you'll see here that I've uh, put a lot of files down to download. I'll try to refer to those as I mention them, um, how to talk about drug kits, effects on the body, things like that. Um, over on the right here, there's a YouTube link, and that's about marijuana effects on the brain. So a short, quick video if you want to check that out. And then we'll have our evaluation at the end, and I'll send you guys to that at the very end of the webinar. But if there's no questions in the beginning, we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm Abigail Newland. I'm a prevention specialist with Preferred Family Healthcare. We're here in Kirksville. We cover the top 27 counties of Missouri. Uh, we do a variety of webinars. You can always find us on our YouTube channel, and most of the time we post them on our Facebook after we do the live webinars. So even if you're not, even if you know somebody that wanted to be here today that couldn't, you can definitely let them know that they can watch those archived videos afterwards. So jumping right in, this is kind of what we're going to talk about, just a brief overview. Um, this is an informational video, of course. We want to definitely focus on the effects of our youth. There's a reason, right, that you have to be sold to use this substance. Um, so we won't go into too much depth on all of these, but there's, there's a lot of great resources in this, and it definitely makes you want to look into it, focus in on why prevention is important, for sure. So starting off, this is just, we won't talk in depth about all of these different kinds, but we do know, obviously, that cannabis, marijuana comes in all different shapes, forms, strands. Um, it can be manipulated in many, many different ways, right? Dabbing a joint, dry um, powders, we know that we can inhale them um, through e-cigarettes, lots of different avenues that way. Um, we're going to talk about THC and CBD here in a second. We obviously know that edibles are a very large thing. We need to be concerned when we talk about our youth because edibles can look like candy, and so if kids are bringing candy to school, right, maybe we have to look a little bit more into that. It is There has been um, cases on record of children overdosing on edibles, right, that THC content getting really up there. Um, we'll talk about a little, a little bit about that. Uh, in a minute, but just all kinds of different ways. It's a little scary to think about, but we'll touch on a few of these today, but probably not all. So this can be a little overwhelming to look at, but this is kind of the breakdown of compo compounds within cannabis or within the marijuana plant. So they're called cannabinoids. Um, there's over 100 chemicals in cannabis, and of course, these are cause these are cause drug-like reactions to your body. So the two main ones, of course, are THC and CBD. Those are the most talked about. Those are the most common. Um, so they're, both, they're in both marijuana and hemp and other products. Um, marijuana contains more THC. Um, hemp contains more CBD. And we'll talk about kind of the side effects of each of those in a little bit more in depth. But they basically have the same chemical formula. The atoms are just arranged differently. And so because the atoms are arranged differently, it creates different chemical properties which creates different effects on the body. And so a lot of people don't maybe recognize that they're for different um, things and can obviously affect your body differently. So we'll just go over each of these briefly. So THC, it binds with the receptors to control pain, mood, um, other feelings. And that's THC is what gives you, makes you feel euphoric. And people say, right, that high, that's that THC component. Um, CBD, it produces more physical effects. And so it works with other elements in the body. Um, maybe linked to feelings of well-being. And so CBD is mostly referred to as that relaxation um, part of the compound. Um, a couple of these other ones down here are a little less common, but I feel like they're still important to talk about. Um, CBN, it's very similar. Um, it's a byproduct of THC. But when sourced from industrial cannabis, um, it can't have more than 0.3% of THC. And so that's where the difference is there is it's a lower amount. The THCA, I'm not going to try to say these big, long names, but they are on there for you to look at because I, I will butcher them, I promise you. Um, but the THCA is the raw, non-psychoactive cannabinoid found in cannabis, um, and it converts to THC when it's dried and heated. And so if you were to go into a shop or to purchase this just straight out, it's probably going to come in a powder form. 
Um, this last month's CDG, um, it's very abundant in low THC and high CBD cannabis strands, and so that might be more found in like hemp. Um, that would be an example where that would be the main component there. But little compounds in there. So moving forward, right, we're talking about THC is the most one um, we're going to focus on when we talk about our youth because obviously, and this has been, there's a million different charts that show a million different numbers, um, but this is just one example from the teensdrugabuse.gov, but just showing about how THC has increased so much from the 80s to, and this is in 2011, um, here today in 2020, right, a lot of times um, marijuana products will be tested for 24 percent um, up to 30 percent of THC potency. So that number keeps increasing the more manipulated, synthetic, right, everybody's always trying to um, create new strands, different things like that. Um, we'll talk about hybrid brands in just a minute. But just to show you, right, that this is also a growing concern with our youth, so they're not necessarily using the same products that people used back in the day. It's a lot stronger. Um, so obviously making effects stronger as well. So this is kind of where we're going to break down and talk about different types. Um, and this is really interesting, and I obviously didn't know this forever. But this first one is called sativa, and this is basically just, you know, there's different types of cannabis when you talk about purchasing or using or whatever it might be. Um, but this one has lower doses of CBD and higher doses of THC. So this is more of the euphoric, energy, um, kind of high type marijuana. And so this is really called the daytime use. Um, and so you think about what our youth are doing during the day, this is where we're concerned, right? So if they're using a sativa strand, they, during the day, you think about what are they doing? They're at school probably, right? They're driving their car. They could be going to church, sports. Um, they might be studying, doing homework, um, you know, making all kinds of decisions during the day. And so that's a concern if people are using this type of strand. Um, if that's the recommendation, right, so they're going to do that first thing in the morning, and then what are they going to do the rest of the day? Um, we'll talk about how it affects their brains and um, things like that in a little bit, but that's just the concern. This is the daytime strand. So I saying that, this is indica, and so this is kind of the nighttime strand. And so this is higher in CBD, so more of that relaxation side of it. Um, we say relaxation, but when we think about our youth, that might come off as maybe low motivation. Um, and so not willing, not wanting to do things. Um, we think about if this is the nighttime strand, we might use this in the evening or after school or in the evening or something like that. And then what are we doing in the, at that time? Right? It still might be homework. It still might be after school activities. We're pills if we're old enough to drive, we might be driving home from um, school events. Um, we're going to sleep at night, so is this going to affect our sleep? If we're not getting good sleep, that might affect our school, right? We can see how this would snowball and why this might be a concern. Um, so this is interesting. You notice these pic this picture I posted between indica and sativa. And so these are the two major ones. And so this one on the left is indica, and this is the CBD higher base. And you'll notice that the plants are actually different themselves. And so indica is more short, stocky, you know, a lot of people say chunkier um, when you look at it, but it has broader leaves. And so if you ever see these, right, hopefully you'll be able to tell the difference. And then this one on the right is sativa, so that's a higher THC concentrate plant. Um, they tend to be taller, skinnier, um, think like pointed leaves, you know, the long, skinny pointed leaves is kind of what those plants tend to look like. But um, we're, this is... So this is the biggest concern here. This is hybrid, and so this is basically all of these strands that have been created, right, that have been manipulated. They're always trying to um, create different flavors, different strands, um, adjust the THC potency levels, things like that. And so this one could be either daytime or nighttime. It depends on how it was created and how it was manipulated because some of them can have more THC than others, and then obviously some can have more CBD than others. So that would affect how it would affect your body and kind of those side effects from there. Um, but just to give you examples, so some these down here, um, some of these are Pineapple, Pineapple Express, Trainwreck, Blue Dream. For example, Pineapple Express, um, some of those symptoms cause paranoia, creativity, and energy, and that's because it's very sativa heavy. So Pineapple Express itself, that strand, has more sativa in it than indica. And so the average THC potency um, in the Pineapple Express strand is about 24%. Um, and I think the most that THC has been tested for that is like 28%, but 24% is the average, which looking at that chart a minute ago, right, that's pretty high, especially compared to how it used to be, but even from 2011. So pretty high there. So we are, I was going to show a video, but it's down here in the link box. I could not get that to work, unfortunately, but it's a great video just saying, 
showing how marijuana affects the youth brain. Um, and we're going to talk about that just a little bit. Um, we won't go into super depth, but this picture is a really great representation. Um, obviously, we know kids are very resilient, but when it comes to the brain, right, we only get one. And so THC, um, cannabis, right, it can have long-term effects on that, and that's really what we're going to talk about. Um, so the endocannabinoid system, so it affects all of these senses in your body, cognition, stress response, emotional, right, all of these things are important. And so this is a really great representation of if using marijuana or substances younger in life, we talk about our brains aren't developed, fully developed until they're 25, so brains are mature until that point. Um, and so if we are using substances at young ages, right, it can affect all these things negatively. So it can affect our memory, um, slower processing, right, it might affect our problem solving skills. Um, things are obviously important and we want our youth to have strong, obviously, process systems. But when THC artificially stimulates cannabinoid receptors, um, it disrupts the function of the natural cannabinoids. And so um, using THC, using cannabis products, it over stimulates the receptors. And so over time, that, um, that over stimulation, it alters the function of the receptors is basically kind of the indicate and how it affects the endocannabinoid system. Um, and of course, other changes in the brain, um, it can lead to addiction because it'll lead to withdrawal symptoms at some point after overstimulation for so long. So that's repeated exposure, of course. It dials down slayer activity. But that's kind of how it affects this one system um, specifically. But again, not good. We don't want that to happen to our youth. We want to make them as resilient as possible. Um, we don't want anything to affect that negatively. Um, this is a really good photo, and there's so many photos out there to show this in different ways. This was just a very simple one, but basically showing how the THC molecule, molecule will block the brain cells, and right, it can just affect that, those transmissions, making things in the brain a little harder, making things a little slower, and we can just see maybe how that overlaps. Um, here on the left are just some negative short-term effects, distorted perception, um, psychotic symptoms, that could be hallucinations, whatever that might be problem solving, disrupted learning, memory, impaired reaction time, it can affect your judgment and your balance and coordination. Um, these are short term effects because it affects your hippocampus. Um, of course, that's where all your learned behaviors and uh, your hippocampus is responsible for a lot of this stuff, but using marijuana, um, cannabis, uh, substances at a young age can affect that and deteriorate that in your brain. Um, the adolescent users could actually be shaving points off their IQ. And so I, <clears throat> I don't have the research study up here, but there was a study of about 1,000 kids in New Zealand um, that actually proved and showed that using um, marijuana at a young age, consistently chronic users, right, it dropped IQ points off. Um, so the IQ test in early adolescent, um, they were tested, and then again when they were 38 years old, um, it was 1,000 kids. Um, and this wasn't just done on frequent pot smokers. Um, it was done on chronic users, so that was more than four days a week. But they were tested um, when they were 18, and then again when they were 38. And the average lost eight IQ lost eight IQ points by the time that they were retested. And so, a really big takeaway and a really big important part of that is um, users who start that also came from that study. Users that started later, and so people that were tested only after they were 18, and then again when they were 38 they did not lose any IQ points. But people that were tested before they were 18 and then again at 38 lost IQ points. And so using marijuana earlier in life during adolescent makes a, it's a huge difference, right? We can obviously see from that huge publicized study that it can affect your IQ and it does have negative long-term effects on your brain. Um, this is another one. So this is actually affecting your brain density. And so this is a really great um, example of just how this green chart here this green is non-users, the blue is regular users, and then, of course, the orange is maybe chronic users, and that would be classified as four days or more in a week. But we can see that the brain density goes down um, or is less in chronic users, which we know is not well. Um, that study information is there. Um, abnormalities measured associated with increased drug use behavior um, can be measured through brain density. And so chronic exposure to TAC um, might also have it might also reduce the age-related loss of nerve cells. So obviously we don't want to do that. That's not going to be good for our kiddos. Um, we don't want to affect their brain, right? We only get one. Um, talking about CBD and THC again, going back, we've mentioned, of course, that brains aren't fully developed till they're 25. 
And so we think about if their brains are immature, they're more susceptible to all of these substances. Um, the receptors will grab onto them more um, maybe quickly and intensely. And so these are side effects that can happen if you're using heavier THC strands of cannabis or if you're using heavier CBD. But because our brains, the youth brains are immature, they might experience these um, symptoms to the extreme, which of course can put them in maybe a dangerous situation. And we don't want to do that. We definitely want to safeguard our children. So the brain is the biggest part. There could be short-term um, health effects. There can be, of course, um, increased risk for addiction. There can be increased risk for um, bad behaviors, lots of things like that. But then, of course, there's all these other things that can come with early substance use. And of course, marijuana, but even other substances, such as tobacco, alcohol, whatever it might be. But that could include poor school performance. There's higher dropout rates, um, welfare dep dependence, greater unemployment, lower life satisfaction, et cetera. Right? We know that early substance use come, increases the risk for all kinds of negative outcomes other than health. But obviously, we're talking about health today because we know that there could be other factors um, to increase the risk for these things. You know, peer influence, emotional distress, um, trauma, problem behavior. You know, lots of things can predispose people to drug use. Um, but youth marijuana use, obviously, it increases risk, and it can add to that as well. So. Moving into what we can kind of do about this, this is just a quick overview of some states where youth marijuana is being used. Um, the different shades are states that have legalized um, medical marijuana, states that have legalized marijuana or medical and recreational, and then states that are everything is completely illegal still. Um, and so if you just put, like you can just point out a couple of these looking through here. So legal states, um, Alaska, California, Ca Colorado, Oregon, um, you know, they have higher percentages. Alaska is at 16.5. Um, and that's where everything is fully um, legal. Um, but states that are everything is still illegal, such as Texas, Alabama, Iowa, right, they have lower percentages. We can see that Iowa has 10.2. Um, where's Alabama? 9.7, right? Those are a little bit lower. And so it's natural and it's easy to say, right, that states that have legalized, maybe there's more um, substance use in the youth going on there. Um, but obviously, this, all of these studies show and suggest that reducing marijuana use among youth will require comprehensive prevention efforts. And that's the take home message, right? Is that there is stuff that we can do to help prevent this. And so we want to do what we can do in our field, um, personally, as much as we can. Um, prevention efforts should definitely focus on norms. We want to surround those around marijuana use in the community, family, among peers, um, reduce availability of marijuana, and increase enforcement. Um, all of this hopefully will help to reduce the youth use. But despite all our prevention efforts, right, we have all these big companies out there showing us stuff like this, right? And so who are they trying to target here? They're not trying to target me. They're not trying to target necessarily the older population. This stuff is obviously targeted towards our youth, um, which is a sad fact, right? Mimicking candy, mimicking their snacks of choice, um, edibles, right? This picture down here on the bottom with the cookie jar, that's very tempting for children. Um, which we're going to talk about safeguarding our house in a little bit because stuff can be really confusing um, for kids in that sense as well. Um, and so what we can do to kind of offset that and help and do our part. Um, but it's definitely obviously crucial that parents and educators learn more about the types of marijuana and the potencies of marijuana because of all of this. I talked about the different types earlier, about the waxes um, and different ways you can smoke it and different potencies. Um, you know, different products you can use and absorb the substance in. All of that stuff, the more you educate, um, the better you'll be able to help your youth um, and know what's going on with them. And if there is a negative side effect, right, then you would be able to pass that information on to medical help. So the more information, the better. So this is what we can do as prevention specialists, as, pe as parents, whatever you are, um, what we can do to help offset this and help prevent youth marijuana use in the future. And so this is just a couple of key things. So obviously keeping it up and away and out of sight from curious children. Um, you do have to be 18 or older to use med Missouri medical marijuana or be a Missouri medical marijuana patient. Of course, um, the law just passed. The, uh, the president just signed the thing, right, that e-cigarettes, all of that, tobacco products. You have to be 21. So that's a great thing. But we want to keep that stuff, even if we um, can have it ourselves as adults, we want to keep it up away from kids, just like we would keep any kind of medicine, vitamin, anything that can harm a child if ingested wrong or if they take a over amount, right? Keep that stuff up, lock it up, whatever it might be. Um, obviously, we don't want it to be in a lower cabinet, upper cabinet where they can't reach. If they can get on a chair or a step stool, right, we might have to get creative. 
make it a little higher. We always want to put every marijuana product or other medicine away every time we use it. And so even if we use it multiple times a day. And so that's very hard for people, right, because we're always busy. I'm going to leave it out on the table. I'm going to do that. I'm going to use it again in a couple hours or I take it at breakfast or lunch, whatever that situation is. But we have to put that away every time because we think about kids might just see that. If we're using it, they might think it's okay for them to use. Um, put it away every time. Consider purchasing a medication lockbox. Those are really great. There could be resources out there to help you get one of those if you don't know how or where to get one. Um, but if you have marijuana in your home, we definitely want to take these precautions. We want to ensure the safety of our children, um, also young visitors in our home. So that's something to consider is it's not just about who lives in your house, right? If you have people over, um, if people are staying at your house, if you're watching other people's children, that can be an issue as well. But we want to protect them, obviously, from gaining access to these harmful substances. Um, more stuff we can do. This is the biggest part, and this is the biggest piece of prevention, um, is obviously talking to your children about marijuana. Um, and so in this bottom um, files box, I've included a lot of talk about it drug kits, and there's even more out there. And so if you're nervous about what to say, when to say it, you don't know how to word questions, those resources are here for you. There's plenty out there. Contact your prevention specialist if you don't, if these don't seem appropriate for what you want to use them for. Um, there's all kinds of different ones out there, but talking to them about it, education. Um, as with all medicines and marijuana products, we want to teach them about medicine safety. And so medical marijuana is being legalized, and so treat it as medicine safety, right? Talk to them about that. Um, if you use a babysitter, choose um, one that's mature, trained, responsible, recommended by someone you trust. So we have to think about that. Even if we are safeguarding, are the people in our lives safeguarding and keeping this marijuana, um, other substances, away from the youth? Um, most youth get their substances from family members or friends or someone personal in their life. And so that's a big take home as well, is if that's where they're getting it, then we have to be the change. Um, it can be difficult to ask people about um, this topic, so we want to include questions along with other things that we might normally discuss, um, especially if you're going to send your child to other people's homes. So we're safeguarding our homes, we're trying to take precautions and prevent in our own lives. But what's going to happen when people go to other, when our kids go with someone else to a sporting event or they go to someone else's house or, you know, they go to youth group with someone else, whatever the situation might be, right, is everyone else on the same page? And so that's, of course, we want community prevention efforts as well because everybody personally will do their own thing. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, this last one, of course, um, this is the poison control number. I strongly encourage you, if you have youth, to put that in your phone. You never know when you're going to need that. Um, there's been a couple studies published that once marijuana was legalized, the poison control calls went up. And so that's just something to be cautious of. Um, and even more to reiterate, putting it away, putting it up, keeping it out of reach, things like that. So that's kind of on a personal level what we can do to safeguard. And this is kind of the big community focus. And so looking at this, it's a little confusing, all these check marks. But this is just a way to show that there's prevention, there are prevention efforts being made in every part of like every aspect, every sector. Um, and so, of course, there's tons of stuff that can be done in the schools in the sense of programs, curriculums um, that are evidence-based, that work on skill building, you know, decision making, um, living a drug-free life, tons of stuff. If schools have SAD groups, right, lots of them are working on drug prevention. Um, and there's stuff that can be done in the healthcare setting, information dissemination, um, obviously getting parents engaged, if you move, keep moving over community-based. Lots of stuff can be done. Alternative activities, right? Substance use, drug, um, drug free activities, family bonding, stuff on the weekend. YMCA is really great about that. Um, lots of other programs, um, but that's really great. Obviously, media campaigns, we see a lot of messaging for this, but a lot of things that are missed in the media is that age gap, right? So that's being targeted towards, it should be being targeted towards adults. So there's there are prevention measures being taken to advocate that that's not for youth, right? The Truth Initiative, there's lots of groups out there. Um, and so those are that's a sense of prevention. Um, and then, of course, all of these programs will enhance social skill building. But we can't just safeguard personally, right, and then send our killed elsewhere. All of this has to be done at once. It needs to be a community-wide effort to get everybody on the same page, right? We definitely want to save our kids' brains, and we want to do what we can to prevent youth marijuana use. That's the goal. Um, a couple of highlights to just end on, just end strong. So all teens use youth is illegal um, for good health reasons. We talked about a few of those. Um, if you want to look more in depth, um, there's lots of 
research evidence on that. Um, all, substances, all substance use puts adolescents at risk. My bad, I can't talk. Um, and so, of course, we're talking about marijuana today, but this includes all kinds of legal substances um, and some legal substances. There's age limits on that stuff for a reason. Um, this one down here at the bottom, right, commercial industries, alcohol, nicotine, tobacco, marijuana, legal, illegal, official discourage underage use, right, those all do that for a reason, and it's because that brain is not fully developed, right? If your brain is immature, those substances are going to affect you differently than if you were an adult, okay? That's based on research. Um, and this last one, of course, drug prevention is brain protection. And I think that's really important. Um, drive that home for people you're working with or people that you're talking to. But it's not just our youth. It's the future, right? Drug prevention is brain protection. And I really like um, that sentence to end on for sure. Um, are there any questions? I kind of just, this has kind of just been an overview, um, touching on a couple things. I think you could get really talking about a couple of these topics in depth for hours, but I know that that's not the time limit we have today. Um, but if there's no, are there any questions, you guys feel free to um, comment in the chat box. Feel free to reach out to my email. You can call my phone. I'll be in the office all day today. Um, again, this webinar will be archived um, on our Facebook and our YouTube after this. And so if you want to send this to somebody, that would be great. Um, but if anybody else, no, that's OK. OK. Well, I am going to go ahead and send you guys to our evaluation, if you don't mind filling that out real quick. And then we'll see you for our next webinar. But I will go ahead. So thank you guys so much.